Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to welcome you out tonight to the Whitfield Harrington Show. This is a show where we take a look at things that are going on in our natural world and we try to see things through a set of spiritual lenses. So as always, let me begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this show we're about to begin. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. May my words be seasoned with grace and may they go into the ears of the listener and may it find good soil in their heart and bring forth the desired harvest of the word that you want, Lord. This prayer we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm so grateful to be here with you one more time um, here to share insight and things concerning what the Lord has been speaking to me concerning um, the times that we live in. And if you are alive and you're listening to me, then you are alive. Um, you have observed a lot of things going on, um, especially when it comes to the things of the economy. Um, one of the things that I want to point out real quickly is for some time now, probably just over a year, the Lord has been speaking to me concerning shortages, supply shortages, famine, food shortages, things of that nature. Um, and you know, sometimes people will, will ask, well, when is it going to happen? You know, and I think it's it's fair to say that if God is going to give you a warning, he gives you enough time to be prepared for the warning, um, rightfully speaking. And Ben, I'm beginning to see things now um, along that line where it's no longer something that you can hide. The media news outlets are slowly but surely starting to acknowledge what was said months ago. For an example, um, I'm not sure if you've seen this particular story, but off the coast of California, in the port of, I think it's LA, there's a backup, like a traffic log, of container ships, cargo ships, you know the ships that bring in all of the, the containers that they put on the back of trucks and they have to slowly unload them off the back of trucks? One container ship um, may have anywhere from 600 upwards of containers on it. And in these containers may be anything from soap to tissue to paper towels to household products, um, things that people are planning to put in their stores for the holiday season. These things are sitting on ships. But there is a backup just in the port of L.A. Um, to where there's probably an estimate, the last time I checked, of 70 cargo ships that are just parked off the coast waiting to be unloaded. Okay? Not only are they waiting to be unloaded, but the story is that some of the ships have an estimated time before they're unloaded of one month. That's just off the coast of California. If you swing around the globe to some of the ports in China, they're having the same issues to where the conditions that you see happening off the coast of California it's even worse in China because the government of China likes to give everyone that comes into the port a COVID test. And if anyone tests positive on the ship, they turn the entire ship around, tell it to go back from whence you came. <laughs> you cannot enter. Now, all of a sudden, you have major retailers like Costco's who are deciding to buy their own or rent their own cargo ships so they don't have to share them with everybody else so that they can get their products into the stores, especially for the holidays. I was even talking to someone um, earlier this week, and they mentioned to me that they live by a train track. And when they first moved into that location, that train would constantly come by with cargo on it. Every hour, all day long coming by with cargo on it. So now all of a sudden that train is only running maybe two to three times a day. It has drastically slowed down and it's so noticeable. 
that when they went into the store, of all stores, a Walmart, Walmart didn't have shopping bags. <laughs> now let this sit in for a second. It's one thing to run out of toilet paper and paper towels, but here is a Walmart that didn't have shopping bags because shortages are happening everywhere. And it's no longer something that they can hide and is getting worse and worse by the day. So where is all of this headed? When you've heard the things that have been discussed here over and over and over, it's as if we're being warned to be prepared for something that's coming. I've even seen little short clips of people going into stores like Walmart's, and, and Walmart has a, a gigantic space where there's just nothing there. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. It's as if they're telling you, hey, there's nothing here. Perhaps you should pay attention to what's going on. And then when you take this and you look at this from a scripture perspective, and you look at the things that are going on in the world as far as all of these glitches, how does a major corporation like Facebook have a glitch that causes them to go down worldwide? Interesting. How does banks, who are major corporations, have glitches that cause money to disappear? How are all of these things happening simultaneously? And then we can sit still and pretend that we don't smell what's coming. All of a sudden, um, data is lost in this particular company. Your information has been stolen from that particular company. Then all of a sudden, you're looking at a situation where Someone is going to find themselves, if not all of us, in a very chaotic scenario. Is it that someone is creating chaos so that they can present themselves as the answer to all things? <laughs> or the perceived answer to all things? Well, let me tell you what I think. Back in 2015, I had a um, vision. Very, very, very shocking vision. All I saw were three numbers written in bold white letters before me. And those numbers were six, six, six. That's it. So as I'm waking up, I have this vision. All I see is the numbers six, 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 which speaks of the mark of the beast. So when you see the economies that are beginning to crash, you know, sometimes when you eliminate the options for people to exit through this door, or that door, you make available only the options that you want to be available to people to where you may not be able to buy or sell anything except you take Mark. Now, that may sound like a fairy tale to someone who's graduated from an Ivy League college and who signed up to be a part of instigating or a part of putting together a plan such as this. And, you know, somewhere between studying real hard to be a road scholar, they walk past a chapel on the campus and miss the class on the book of Revelations that talks about all of this. And so you see people will sign their souls over to the devil. For what? In exchange of what the Lord says, that the beast will give them power for one hour. <laughs> so imagine you, you, you're you going along with what the beast is doing. You're going along with the plan and the scheme and thinking that you, you're going to run the world. And then the Bible says, yeah, they're going to run it for one hour. <laughs> one hour with the beast. And you see, one of the things that, that, that really catches me surprised surprise now is I asked the Lord, what are you talking about in a moment like this? And the Spirit said, peace. There is a peace that is needed in the midst of this coming storm. Because 
as strange as it seems to me, as strange as we see things happening, coming stock market crashes and different things like that, it's as if the Lord is telling me to prepare to come out stronger rather than weaker. Which means this is something that is not permanent. For those who gave their power unto the beast to rule with them, they didn't rule according to revelations, but one hour. And you know, that's a bad deal. To sign up to sell your soul for something that's only going to last an hour. Very bad deal. And so now, here we are, in this generation, watching the very Bible unfold before us. Which is why the Lord starts sending warnings in advance. Tell the people to stock up on food. If somebody tells you, you can't buy this box of saltine crackers unless you take this mark. It's easy to say, I will never take your mark when you have a whole pantry full of saltine crackers. All right? You don't have to do it. But when people are uh, reluctant and sometimes just sit back and watch a tidal wave coming and don't try to get off the beach to get to higher ground, then all of a sudden they get hit with the impact of it and then they have to deal with the consequences. If you're listening to me more than once, you've heard this over and over and over. It's no longer time to be fearful. It's time to be prepared and to recognize that there is peace in the midst of the storm. You know, years ago, um, I remember there was a tornado that was coming through our hometown. And I think that tornado, it passed directly over our home knocked down a gigantic tree, and at the end, our home was still standing. And we, we, we was blessed. There were some people who roofs got knocked off, um, you know, all sorts of damage and different things that took place. And my father was a carpenter, so he built the house that we lived in. Um, and, you know, one day my mother said to him, you know, a storm was coming, says, you know, you don't think the, the tornado was going to blow the roof off of this house, do you? And he said, what, this house? No. <laughs> He said, I put so many nails in this house, this house will roll before this roof comes off. <laughs> and, you know, I found that funny, but he was serious. That where you were supposed to put one nail, he put three. So he put, you know, so many pounds of nails in that house to ensure that it stayed together. Which means when you have the time to put something together, you should do it. And sometimes it looks like the ones who are the most educated ones and the, and the most who are out front are the ones who are going to survive. I, I tell that story because, you know, there was another storm that came through. This is before I was born, but I heard it. Um, it was a storm that came through the Mississippi Delta, and it went to a little town called Swift Town, Morgan City. Killed a lot of people. A lot of people. That used to be a large community, and a lot of those people were dead. And I think my father was a pastor at the time, and he had to go maybe identify four or five people who were deceased, who were his members. Um, but the strangest thing happened. Dr. Love, all of those wonderful built construction homes that had been built according to the building code were destroyed. But those little shotgun houses were still standing. <laughs> and you know, my father figured something out after that. He says, the reason why that shotgun house is still standing is because the wind can go under it, the wind can go through it, and the wind can go over it. That's interesting. That something that was so, you know, if you if you don't know what a shotgun house is, let me explain to you what a shotgun house is, all right? <laughs> See, back in the day, <laughs> and we're trying to maintain our composure here, all right? Back in the day in the South, a lot of times homes were built by poor people, and they really didn't have, you know, a licensed carpenter or a contractor to come build it, and they just built what they knew how to build. And so what they would do is they would just build a straight, narrow little house, all right? And everything would be in that one little narrow house off of one side. You walk in, that would be the living room and the bedroom, all right, right there, 
and the next you might have a kitchen and you, you probably you're going to have an outhouse and there was maybe one room on the back and that was about it all right and the thing is the reason why they call it a shotgun house was you could open the front door and you can open the back door because everything was straight and you could stand at the front door and shoot a shotgun through the back door and it wouldn't hit anything that was just how it was designed and you would have rows and rows and rows and rows of these little houses that would be lined up along the street. But these little houses withstood the storm that destroyed the well-constructed homes. So don't look at yourself and assume that because you don't have a trillion dollars in the bank like some other people, that you can't survive what's coming. When you put your trust in God, it doesn't matter. Your trust in God is what will deliver you. Or I should say the God that you're trusting in is the one that will deliver you. So this is where the peace that we have come from. Now, I, I can say I hear people, and I don't, I don't think anybody's wrong for saying this, that the rapture is about to happen. You know, let me be honest with you. <laughs> Jesus himself don't know when the rapture is going to happen. The angels don't know. I don't know, and probably you don't know um, when it's going to happen, for it is written that no man knows the day of the hour. But the Lord does say that it will come up on the earth like a thief in the night. So we must be prepared for it. So it's an event. You have to understand that this is an event that angels don't even know when it's going to happen. Jesus himself doesn't even know when it's going to happen. So we have to be prepared for that moment. And that was something that the Lord said to me a few years ago, that the saints need to be rapture ready. You hear that? Rapture ready, where we are ready to be caught up with the Lord at any time. And then when you see all of the things that are going on, you know, when you talk about rapture ready, I can't help but to think about the first day of school. If you can remember your very first day of school, and I know that's kind of difficult for many of us, but that's one of those days that, that, that just still lives in your mind. You know whether you cried on the first day or not. You know, you remember. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> you know if you boohooed all day and you can remember those other kids who were in the room crying as well. But all that day, you were looking for a face face, a familiar face to pop through that door and to come get you and take you home. The reality of it all is, is when we're trusting in our God, is that we're waiting for the day that the Lord comes to rescue us. This world, as I heard one person say, is a sinner's paradise and a child of God's prison. And we are waiting to be rescued, to be released from this place to a greater place. And that's pr primarily because of the pleasures of this world. It's a sinner's paradise. But for us children of God, this is a prison until we're delivered from it, we're redeemed from it, and God destroys it and builds another one. So until that time, live right. I mean, it comes down to just that basic principle. Live right before God. Do everything that you can. It don't take all of that. Man, do more than that. In this, you know, when, when, when people are saying it don't take all of that, I would rather do too much and get before God and find out I did too much than to get before him and find out I didn't do enough. So live right. Prepare yourself. Pray, store up things, be wise in your consumption, and let the peace of God keep you. Let the peace of God lead you in all the affairs of your life, and you don't have to be worried about what you see. I see people just lining up to be used by the devil, intelligent people. I mean, the people that, that went to school and got the degrees and and the scholarships to be great, but are being deceived 
They've signed up for these secret societies and they got these secret deals that they've made with people and with the devil and they think that they are running things not realizing they are simply endorsing their own deception. It's sad. But there's an old saying that every tub sits on his what? Own bottom. Which means you have your own choices to make for what you're going to do. Week after week, the Lord has allowed us to come before you and to share with you the warning signs. Share with you dreams and visions. All out of the concern for the souls of humanity. The Bible tells us that it's not God's will that anyone should perish, but that all would come to repentance. If you just read the book of Revelation, as someone said, they had a, a, a dream, and on, all of a sudden they had something that was telling them to read the book of Revelation, and they got up immediately and started reading it. Read the book of Revelations over and over and over. I'm scared of that book. Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> There's a lot of things we can fear in the world, all right? But if you fear God, you don't have to fear the other things. And if God has something for you to read, don't be afraid to read it, all right? It may sound strange, spooky, and, and all of that, but read it until you begin to see the very things that the Lord has spoken concerning are coming to pass. And then the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, Verse 6, it says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So there's a peace that God has for us that will keep us. But we have to align ourselves with the purposes and the plans of God in this hour. It's unfortunate that, you know, these things will happen, but at least we know in advance that they will happen. So you can be encouraged. When you, it's strange that, 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 that all of the discouraging things that I see that are about to transpire, somehow I still find my way encouraged in the midst of it because I can see something else. God is showing me something else on the bright on the on the bright side or the other side of this dark tunnel that's approaching. And as we continue to pray, things are continuing to be exposed and things are going to continue to be exposed and you know, it might get darker before the light shines. That's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Because there is a light that never goes out. And that light is Christ. And when you put your hope and your trust and your faith in him, he, he'll get you through the dark times. No problem whatsoever. He, he will get you through the dark times. Everybody else on the ship was concerned about the storms that was raging. And Jesus was asleep. You ever notice in the Bible... You see the disciples sleep at certain times. And when they were asleep, they should have been awake. <laughs> and when everybody else was awake, Jesus was sleeping. <laughs> the one thing that it looked like he should have been awake for, concerned about, he was asleep. He had peace in the midst of a storm. And then he commanded the storm, what? Peace be still. My job and my assignment in this moment is to come to you with a word of peace in the midst of a storm. When you put your trust in God and you understand that God has an assignment for his word in his hour. And when you come into alignment with his word and his will, it may be some ups and some downs and some challenges here and there, but there is a peace. <laughs> which pass it all understanding. There is a peace that will look at things empty and out on the shelf and say, God will supply my needs. There is a peace that God gives 
when you understand that you are aligned with his word and his will in this hour, and that he is calling men, women, boys, and girls to stay in a place of repentance, to stay in a place to where we are rapture ready. There are people that will argue with you and debate about you, debate with you about whether or not the rapture is coming now, later. Whenever it comes, have your ticket in your hand, ready to go. Which is the most important part. This is the peace that God wants us to have. Not the peace in how much food you have stocked up. All right? God forbid a storm can come through like a tornado did years ago. Poof. Everything's gone. Okay? Let's keep it real. You know, and I, I saw something. I'm not saying that the Lord showed me this. But I saw something. All of those ships off the coast. You know, God forbid a tsunami happens and tops and throws those ships over while they're out there. You know, something like that could happen. But God, I pray that God forbids it from happening. But overall, I just believe that there's a peace that God gives you. That no matter what life throws at you, you will be able to rest in the midst of a storm. I thank the Lord for this word. I thank the Lord for it. I'm going to pray as we close out tonight. Amen. I'm going to pray that the spirit of the Lord will give us peace in knowing. No matter if folks tell you, do this or you ain't going to have a job. As long as you don't take my God from me, talk to me, somebody. I can get something else. And I would tell people this. And let me say this before I pray. If you're being pushed out of a job, because of your own personal choices, don't argue with them. Talk to God. God said he will open a door for you that no man can shut. I was talking to a young man, and we were going back and forth. Hey, I got to sign another contract. <laughs> he moved on to something better. So God is a provider, and we must trust him as being a provider. I'm praying, Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for this moment in time. Lord, you chose us for this generation to see the manifestation of your power in this dispensation that we live in. Lord, we pray now that you would help us to simplify our lives, to set aside time to seek you, so that as we dwell in your presence, O oh God, we would find the peace that passes all understanding. And as we make our request known unto you, O oh God, that you would hear them. As we see the things that are troubling the world, Lord, we pray that they do not trouble us. Don't let our faith become gelatin faith, that if something touches it, it shake. But let it become solid as a rock in you, O oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus. And may our hearts and our minds be forever fixed to seek your face like never before. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, as we trust you and we thank you, Lord, knowing that you will supply all of our needs. We thank you that you give us advanced notices and advanced warnings concerning the things we need to know and the things we need to do. Now, Lord, may our hearts and our spirits do exactly as you lead us to. This is our prayer now, as we thank you for these things. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, that's all the time I have for this week. And as I always say around about this time, it's time for us to stop playing and start praying. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.